we discussed about uh, fixed size array and uh, dynamic array right okay so just let me summarize uh, what we discussed yesterday um, first we discussed about uh, you know the scalar variable and array variable a scalar variable is nothing but to store a single value and whereas array variable is to store collection of values right then Array variable again has got two things. One is a fixed size array, and second one is a dynamic array. Right. And a fixed size array is nothing but the size will be fixed uh, while declaration itself, and you will not be able to resize it in the middle of the program. Whereas dynamic array in a sense, like okay, so you, you, we don't specify the size in the beginning while declaration, but whenever we need it, we can keep increase the size of the array, or you can also decrease the size of the array. And we also discussed about two statements: one is uh, redeem, and second one is uh, preserve. And redeem statement is used to redefine nothing but resizing an array, whereas preserve is used to whenever you redefine, if you want to retain the old values in the array again. In the same index numbers, then you can use preserve. Right? So you can use preserve. So this is what we have discussed yesterday. Right? Okay. Now, so uh, as I told, that there is one more thing that we need to discuss about arrays. Something called, um, you know, uh, dimensions. Okay. So dimensions. So an array can be a single dimensional or array can be a multi-dimensional. Okay, so whereas a single dimension is nothing but you store a single collection of values. You store a single collection of values. But whereas multi-dimension is nothing but you can store a multiple collection of values in one array. Okay, now let's take a simple example here. Okay, so let's take a simple example. I'll do one thing. Um, just give me a moment. We'll, we'll take a, some real scenarios and we'll just develop a small uh, piece of application here. Just, just give me a moment. Just developing a small, um, you know, HTML page, some kind of a real application, but I'm just giving some junk values as of now. Now assume, so this is just, you know, and we, I'm just adding the rows to the table. Assume that this is an uh, application that what you have here, this is the application that what you've got. And all these are the employee details, whatever you have got here in this. But what I'm saying here, all these are the employee details. Now what you need to do is, one of the scenario is like this for you, one of the, uh, validation or one of the scenario has come like this whatever the data is displayed in this particular table right so whatever the data displayed in this particular table whatever you have here all the data that you need to capture and you need to store it you need to store right okay now if you want to store this data how the data has been stored here in the form of table right 
in the form of table and in each table we have rows and columns if you exclude the column header how many employees that we have in this forget about what data i have in this four employees now i need to store the details of all four employees but i don't want in multiple arrays i want to store it in a single array right now assume that i have got a single dimensional array in a single dimensional array then what i have to do is okay so if i take a single dimensional array remember i can store only one collection of values so i can store the first customer well, first employee values here okay array of 0 equal to first name array of 1 equal to second name RF2 equal to last name, RF3 equal to DOB, RF3 equal to mobile number, RF4 equal to uh, 5 equal to username, and 6 equal to password. Right? So if I maintain a single dimensional array, I will be able to store only one customer value at a time. But what I have to do now, I don't want to store only one customer value, all the customer values I want to store. But if I go by Again, say RF6 completed here, right? RF6 is completed here. But if I want to store second, if I start with the seven, then that will be difficult for me because later, if I want to retrieve the data for a particular customer only, it will be difficult for me to understand the index number again. So what should I do now? I don't want to store it as a single collection values. If I want to store multiple collection, what I have to do? Okay, in the array, don't just go by a single dimensional like this. Now, what I need to do, since I have four customers and I have nothing but four customers, nothing but four rows, right? And how many columns I have? Seven columns. Then I need to create an array. I need to create the memory in the array is like this. Four rows and seven columns. I need to create the memory like four rows and seven columns. So as like I have stored the data in the table, I have to store the data in a similar way or in array also, so that it will be easy for me to refer in the future. So if I want to refer the first name of the first customer, what should I do? First row, first column. If I want to retrieve middle name of the first customer, then I have to say first row, second column. First row, third column. First row, fourth column. First row, fifth column. First row, sixth column. First row, seventh column, like this. Or if I want for second customer, I say first, second row, first column, second row, second column, second row, third column, second row, fourth column. But how many dimensions it is going to be? It's a two dimensional, right? It's a two dimensional, right? Okay, now there is one more use of the dynamic array here the, the two dimensional and making it as a dynamic why we should make uh, it as a dynamic right now let's say here how many rows i have now four rows now assume that you are using fixed size array just to say you are using fixed size array then you have to mention four rows and seven columns right then what will be it is three comma six 3 comma 6 each one starts from 0 only each dimension starts with 0 so 3 means 0 to 3 4 6 means 0 to 6 7 so first one always refers to the row second one always refers to the columns okay when it is two dimensional remember okay now since I have four rows here since I have four rows I might have defined the size like 3 comma 6 when I'm using fixed size but Later what happened, I cannot give only four rows will be there. So what should I do here? Again, is assume that if I click on one more, what happens? There is one more employee added. Now if I may, uh, earlier when I was executing the script, there were only four. So that all the data comes and stored here. But now one row has been increased. But if I define the size as three only for rows, again four rows only it will take. Then I have to lose the fifth employee here. Right? Okay, now what I what it is? Okay, so fine, one more has come, right? So I went to the application, I went to the script, and then I just increased the row size for that fixed size array. I changed it to four from three to four. I have done fine, it's working. But later, after you know executing that in the next release, again, you one more row as we, we have got one more row, or we have got two rows extra, three rows extra, like this. Okay. 
Now, if I define the size like four now, will I will I be able to take a complete data into array now? No, right? No, because the row is number is not being constant here. Number of customers or number of employees you display here is not constant. Will be changing from execution to execution. Even I will until I execute the code. Even I will not be able to know how many have come there or how many will be there. Right. So in such cases, what I do if I go for fixed size array, then first I need to see how many are there in this application. Then I need to go to the script and then I need to increase the size so that the array can take that value. Those values, those many values. But how much time it will consume? I have to go manually here and then see it and go to the script and increase it. No, that's that's time consuming thing. It's not a good maintenance. Then what should we do here? You have to make it as a dynamic. Then when you make it as a dynamic, you will get the flexibility like this. Okay, I don't define the size to you directly. So what you do is, okay, whenever you define the size of an array, first what you do, first you understand how many rows and how many columns are there in this table. Based on number of rows and number of columns we have got in this table, and then you define the size automatically. Right? So you take the number of rows into a variable, you take number of columns into a variable, then you define the size according to the number in that variable. So that you get the flexibility of it. One of the situation where you have to go for dynamic array. Why we should go? Because the data is not being constant. We are not getting the same collection of values every time. The number of values are being increased or number of values might get decreased. You don't know. Getting what I'm saying here. Okay, so this is how the dynamic array, I mean, this is why you need to use dynamic array because in the application, we will not be knowing how many rows we are going to get or how many columns we are going to get or how many values will be there in the application. So you number of values you have in the application, the size has to be automatically defined. So when you want to define like that, it has to be dynamic array. It should not be a fixed size array. Now, if you want to store this data in the array, what kind of data that you should, sorry, what kind of uh, array that you should have? It should be a dynamic array and it should be a multi-dimensional array, two-dimensional. So two-dimensional means rows and columns. Whenever you say two-dimensional array, it refers to rows and columns. Okay, then how we can refer to that rows and columns? Say like this, or it can be defined in this way. Dim my array. Of, if you say this is a dynamic array, and you can say three comma six, what does it mean now? Four rows and seven columns. Three is nothing but the index here. For every dimension, you you are not mentioning the number count the count of values. You are referring the index number. Remember, index should be starting from zero. You have to start counting from zero. So when you say three comma six, each one is an index number. There, three is an index, six as an index. So three means zero to three four comma six means zero to six seven. So it is equivalent to four rows and seven columns. Okay. Now, in case, now, if you want to store the values in the array, if you want to store the values in the array, then what you should do here, you should not directly say like my array of zero this time. This is wrong now. That's wrong. Why it is wrong now? Because it's not single dimension. If it is single dimension, you may refer like this, first value, second value. But when it is multi-dimension, it is mandatory that you must have to refer all the dimensions there. So you must have to refer like rows and columns now. When you want to retrieve the value or when you want to assign the value, then you must have to refer both the index numbers. First dimension and second dimension. This is first dimension. This is second dimension. This is rows and this is columns. Okay, 
So where and all we use this? Now th there are situations like this. You have the database. Assume that you need to do some kind of database testing or you have the database. Whereas you run the query. Okay. So one of the simple example is you just say this is the application which is stored in the database. Uh, sorry, application which is displayed in the application. Let's see here. What I do is. Assume I just have a similar data in the Excel also. Just you know, I, I'm just copying it to the you know Excel, but assume that this data you have in the database, okay? You have in the database. Now what you have to do is maybe in the Excel or maybe in the database, you need to verify. One of the validation point that what you have is the data which is in the excel or the data whatever is there in the application here should be matching with the data which is in the excel or assume that this is in the database so whatever the data displayed in the application the data should be matched with the data in the database that what I'm saying that that's one of the validation point just assume that you're doing some kind of report based testing and how the reports and all will be generated in an application so the data will be stored in the database and what we, based on the query what you execute or the filter criteria whatever that you select and all number of employees will be or not only employees any good data it could be might display like this so what I have to do the data what is displayed here is matching with the database or not that's a validation so assume that you, that's kind of database testing that you need to do we have to do that in the future we are going to do that now what should you do here like okay so if you take data from one by one cell every time take the data from first cell and go to the database take the data from first cell and compare both once it is done, go to the second cell of the first row in the Excel, go to the first row, second cell of the first row in the database, match with that. So each and every cell that you need to match with, which consumes a lot of time. If you go by the one by one cell every time like that, you know, validate it, it consumes a lot of time. Instead of doing that, what you need to do is, okay, whatever the data is displayed in the application, you take the data into one array. Whatever the data displayed in the database, you take into another array. Now we can compare both the arrays. The data in the first array should be equivalent to data in the second array. To save the time, because every time if you want to deal with the table and the database every time for every cell, which consumes a lot of time. Instead of that, if you can take the data from database to array, application to array, if you are comparing an array, which will save a lot of time for you. Right? Now, if you want to, this is one of the situation where you have to use two dimensional. Why it should be two dimensional? Because I need to validate cell by cell. The data is stored cell by cell here. The data is stored in the form of rows and columns. So if you want to validate them, you have to store the data in the array in the same form how it has been displayed in the application or how it has been displayed in the database. In the database, it is displayed in the form of rows and columns. In the uh, application also, it's displayed in the form of rows and columns. Or in the Excel, it displays rows and columns. And so when you are reading the data from this source and storing it, even your array also should have rows and columns. So if you want to have rows and columns, then it must be two-dimensional array. It must be two-dimensional array. Remember, in the reality, we don't go beyond that. Usually, we use two dimensions. We don't go beyond that but in interview question sometimes it will be like this okay so they might ask now one of the interview question is this huh? uh, you you have an excel file just to say you have an excel file what I have to do is whatever the data that we have in that excel all the data I have to take into an array Data, all the data in that Excel. That Excel can contain multiple sheets, right? 
and excel can contain multiple sheets each sheet contains rows and columns each sheet contains rows and columns right so now if you want to take all the data into an array you in the excel the data has been categorized like this first sheet number of rows and columns second sheet number of rows and columns third sheet number of rows and columns then how many dimensions it store three dimensions so in array also you have to store in a similar format now in array also you can make it as three dimensional now assume that i have four sheets i have four sheets in each sheet i have 10 rows and 10 columns what how the array should be defined now first dimension is for sheets how many sheets are there four sheets so that index must be 3 10 rows 9 10 columns 9 3 comma 9 comma 9 it should be that is three dimensional so it must be like this dim my array 3 comma 9 comma 9 now this time when you are assigning the value or when you are retrieving the value you, sh you can start from here what does it mean first sheet first row first column my array of 0 comma 0 comma 1 first sheet first row second column 0 comma 0 comma 2 first sheet first sheet first row second column 0 comma 1 comma 0 first sheet second row first column 1 comma 0 comma 0 second sheet first row first column like this so like this you know you can split the data into dimensions when you have a single collection of values then you go with the single dimensional array or when you say no i have i don't have single collection it's a multiple collection of values i have and i need to store the multiple collection of values into a single array then in that case what you should do instead of using a single dimensional array use multi dimensional array so in each row multiple columns will be there multiple rows and multiple columns one collection one row one collection one row like this you can store the data that will be easy for you to maintain right easy for you so now let's take a simple example here now assume as i told yesterday i have five batches here just you say that uh, five batches in each batch i have 25 people or 20 people you just say in each batch i have 20 people now how many total five into 20 so total 100 right now if i say i need to store all the data into another so if I want to store all the data in one array as a single collection, I have to say 100 people, right? My array of 99. Then from first 0 to the last student, I need to store in one by one index number. But when I store like this, then it will be difficult for me to differentiate the students, which student belongs to which batch. So now what I, do, do, what I need to do, I need to group them into the batches and then I need to store accordingly. Now assume five groups, right? So five batches. So I have one flexibility. If I still want to go as a single dimension, I need to create five arrays. For batch one, one array with single dimension. For batch two, another array. Batch three, another array. Batch four, another array. Like this. But if I want to say that, no, no, I don't want to create this many arrays. I want a single, uh, di sorry, single array, one array only. Then you say, for each batch, one row you create. For each batch, one row. Now you say, 4, 24. What does it mean? 4, 24 means 5. 4 means 5. And 25, 5 rows and 25 columns. One batch, one row. Okay, in first row, 25 columns will come. You store all the students in 25 columns of the first row. Second batch, you go for second row. And all 25 students you can place here. That's it. So this is why normally you have to use two-dimensional or multi-dimensional array. To store multiple collection of values in a single array, then we go for multi-dimensions. Okay. So, I don't take 
too much from this as of now okay because uh, we as i told we need to take the data from database or excel right so wait till the time we, we have a concept where we need to read the excel we have to do this kind of validations whatever i told right you are going to get all these are real time examples all this are okay number of you can do that you can do that okay so i, I don't uh, mean that that's what i told you for this wait for some more time okay so i will address all these things i will address fine okay so an array can have a single dimensional or multi dimensional or an array can have 60 dimensions maximum 60 row okay and i can have maximum of 60 dimensions but we never use that it's in super computers and all they use but we, we never use we use just only two dimensions maximum okay so maximum two dimensions because we don't get that kind of situations we never we don't get the situations to use three dimensions also okay so wait for some time to get the real time examples like where we read the data from database where we read the data from excel or where we read the data from uh, uh, tables like this from the application so this is just a small up, you know screen that i have built okay just for this but now just only thing now what you need to understand is the concept of the array why that arrays why the arrays will be used arrays will be used to store the collection of values instead of storing a single value that's what you need as of now okay got what i'm saying okay so to summarize this two types of variables scalar and array scalar is single uh, stores a single value and array is for a collection of values array a fixed size and uh, dynamic fixed means size will be defined in the beginning dynamic means an expandable memory using whereas array can be a multi single dimensional or multi dimension single dimension is to store a single collection of values multi dimension is to store multiple collection of values that's it okay so you take this but keep some gap maybe a um, like maybe some one page gap okay so one page or just maybe some uh, 15 lines 10 lines gap because i need to tell few more things some notes i need to tell but for that you need to gain some additional knowledge so if i tell that now that will be that leads to additional confusion for you so that i won't want you know confuse you again by telling all this in the beginning itself so you need to gain a bit of experience and so that you will easily understand that okay so we are going to see such kind of real examples so i'll develop some web pages because in one application you don't get all the examples whatever we need right so in one application so that's the reason we are going to develop some customized pages like this okay also there are two things that we are going to practice from you know um, next couple of days onwards uh, to even manual and automation things okay automation things once we start with the looping statements you must have to start writing the logics by considering the real time scenarios so how you are going to practice is one is whenever i give a particular screen to you first you have to write the manual test cases for it and when you are a manual tester what are all the things you validate and then you need to we are going to practice the automation also on the same thing okay so uh, as of now that's the reason you need uh, some experience for that hmm? so no need to worry you will you are going to you are going to get it hmm? before i take the real application so i'll develop uh, web pages like this and then i will be giving back to you right okay so with this we are just done with the data types and variables okay but by keeping some topic pending in the arrays by keeping some topic pending in the arrays because that that you cannot understand if i explain that also that would lead to confusion instead of understanding it okay so that makes it too complex 
some kind of dependency right 